Okay, today I thought we'd actually play with the 1983 Verbot made by Tomy. It was one of the first robots to uh, have speech recognition. There are, I have tons of other ones that are newer, that work better, that you wear a headset and they actually recognize things. And I've got ones that came right after this that were a fake speaker recognition and actually was counting pauses. They would give you different numbers of words to say for functions. And anyway, this one supposedly actually has a uh, CPU that um, when you speak into this wireless microphone, it's still analog at that point and it uh, it's go, runs through a D to A converter in there or A to D, analog to digital converter. And I think it's a very, very low bit rate because it doesn't recognize the words very well. And there's a, the unique thing about it is there's a single motor that when you turn it on is running all the time, powering this gearbox. And once the uh, the CPU has memorized your words, you program each button as you say it, and it will memorize that sound. When it sees that sound again, it then activates a small uh, read relay type function, shifts the gears basically, because that motor is running the whole time, sort of like the Armatron. There's one motor, and yet the Armatron, you move all those controls, can do all those different things. This can do all these different things with just the one motor, which will be running the whole time. This is the uh, version as seen in America, and this is the version that was uh, sold in Japan. Let's move a little bit closer so we can see there's some color differences, but also, I guess, the name when it translates. Kikuzu, perhaps? Kikuzu. It's the instruction manual and the transmitter for the different color Japanese one there. Um, moving back to this one, you have uh, two C cell batteries which run that motor, which is on anytime the switch is on, and then the uh, four AA batteries are in there to operate the electronics and CPU. I do have the um, patent application and patent drawings for this up on the website Alphadrome. I'll link them down below in case you'd like to look at it and see the mechanics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the instruction manual is actually fairly, uh, quite a few pages involved in it. But um, let's take a look at the box. Let's look at the box. Do I need to get further back? I think maybe a little. So here's the front of the box. The program aroma performs eight functions by remote control. And here you can uh, see some of the functions. You can also see that it was basically 50 bucks at Toys R Us back when I bought it. And here they're showing the larger Omnibot and they're showing the smaller Dingbot. Um, the box is dated 1984. The patent application that I have is dated uh, 1983 and if I remember right this is one I picked up later and of course the uh, Japanese version I picked up later my original one which is still in the styrofoam insert has yellowed now not all the plastic yellows just some of the plastic and you know this about Tommy and a bun bunch of the other robots all have these problems too. When I bought this robot Mint, it had never seen sunlight, daylight. It lived down in the basement with all my other robots. And at that time, I only had about 250 robots. Which, well, I was getting closer to 600 maybe. But the lighting that I had down in the basement was all fluorescent tube lighting. And if you know anything about fluorescent tubes, they actually... Uh, have a UV light inside which energizes the uh, phosphorescent material which the white material they put on the tube makes it glow white and that UV light is what helps turn things yellow so on the back side of this let's put this container down 
So this would have been facing forward on my display shelf the whole time. So on the back side where the UV light doesn't hit, it's still white. Interesting though, I mean the inside plastic never turned white. A little part around the LED, which is an insert piece, I mean stayed white, never turned yellow. And of course, in where the sunlight doesn't shine. So after it had turned yellow and I hadn't uh, way back then, I mean this happened almost immediately back in the 80s. I had never used the, heard anyone doing ultra bright or any of the ways of turning plastic white again by basically using hydrogen peroxide. But uh, that's a temporary fix also. Things that have been ultra brighted tend to turn yellow again. It's the nature of the plastic that was used. So even though this robot is completely mint and probably only been played with once or twice, it's, <laughs> it's yellowed. So I picked up another one that uh, wasn't yellowed. And that's the one we'll play with today. So, when you're playing with this thing, what the instructions tell you to do, and they give you some uh, helpful hints here. So basically, they're, you're going to push each one of these buttons down, and as you push it down, they're suggesting you could say, Stop Boy, or Stay or hold it. They're telling you to try all three of those. Whichever one works best for you, then that's the one you'll keep. And when you want the head to uh, do its thing, you can say hello there, or smile, or, or hiya, pick up, carry, lift it. So they're getting um, more syllables and different words so that the uh, system can try to recognize the word and perform that function again later. And it's what you'll find even back in the 80s, I, I found, and we're going to find today, is it doesn't do all that well in actually recognizing the, the, the words. You know, what works really well is just tones. I think back then, I can't remember if I was using a uh, tone generator that I made, like a little organ, and just picked different tones for each one of the functions, or if I had a DTMF tones, telephone tones. I can't remember which. So when you turn it on, you should hear the motor running, and it should kind of twitch every now and then, because that's that main motor in there running the whole time, and then you have to switch your transmitter on. Then as you hold a button, this is the stop button, but they're, they're not telling you to say the word stop, like it doesn't recognize that. Stop boy works better, so I'm going to hold this in and this light should flash, and if it recognizes a sound that I've made, then the light will stop flashing. Here. Stop, boy. Okay, now we'll move on to the next one. Let's go with a hello there. Hello there. Let's just try those. Hello there. That's the mouth thing. It makes that sound and it moves it a little mouthpiece up and down. And then if I say stop boy, hopefully it will stop. Stop boy. Okay, it stopped. Now let's try pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Well, then let's try put down. Put down. Put down. Right. Um. Go straight. Want to drive off the uh, counter? Go straight. Stop, boy. Let's try backward. 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 That went forward. 
Backward. There we go. Stop boy. I'm knocking stuff over. Stop boy. Stop boy. Turn left, let's try that. Turn left. Turn left. Stop, boy. Stop, boy. Let's try a uh, right turn. Right turn. I think it's soft. Right turn. Right turn. Right turn. Try a different word then. Circle right. Circle right. Turn left. Stop, boy. Stop, boy. Turn left. Stop, boy. Stop, boy. Hello there. Stop, boy. Stop, boy. Stop, boy. That doesn't stop him. Stop, boy. So basically, you have to uh, be able to say the sounds exactly the same as when you program them and not forget what they were. That's why I think tones work so well. I just remember having a small box that I had hand built that produced tones and I could program it and then I just knew what the buttons were and I could make it do it every single time. But um, there you have it. It's the Tomy Verbot from the very early 1980s. Um, like my box was when they first came out in 1984. The patent I'll link down below is dated 1983. And uh, we also have the Japanese version which was the Kikuzu with its uh, instruction book and its Kikuzu remote. Can't think of anything else we need to say about it.